examine religious landscapes. This is important to geographers to better understand the many connections that exist among religion, nature, and the landscape. A number of religious holidays and rituals in different religions are associated with several for seasonal changes, including harvest festivals and solstice celebrations. Geographer J.K. Wright coined the term geopiety to reflect the religious-like reverence that people may develop for the earth. The definition of geopiety was subsequently extended to include the idea that people have strong attachments to both sacred and secular places. Two key points to mention about geopiety is that a person need not be religious to experience it, and nature can be an important dimension of civil religion. There are many groups that are not associated with organized religion that practice geopiety due to their reverence of nature. The Boy Scouts of America, for example, have long cultivated a certain appreciation for and understanding of the outdoors. Religion can also affect how people perceive and use the environment, and therefore today a number of Christians emphasize environmental stewardship, which is the idea that they should be responsible managers of the earth and its resources. Many other faiths incorporate environmental ethics as well. In northern Thailand, Buddhist monks, shown in the picture, have wrapped trees with saffron cloth. The Buddha also wore a saffron robe, so this action is a part of a ritual that ordains the trees and makes them sacred. Some Buddhist monks ordain trees to prevent them from being logged and protect forest environments. Buildings constructed for religious use make some of the most distinctive cultural landscapes. These buildings serve important practical and symbolic purposes. Many of these buildings are used for worship and some consider churches sacred places. Gathering in religious buildings have different meanings for different religions. In Protestant Christianity, the church is not sacred but a place to gather for worship. Roman Catholics and Eastern Orthodox, on the other hand, see the church as a sacred place and the house of God. In Islam, the mosque is also not considered sacred, but a place to hear a sermon and to pray. Buddhists and Hindus generally do not gather for congregational worship on a specific day. However, Buddhist temples are considered sacred space and an architectural expression of God. Hindus generally keep a shrine in their home. The photo on the bottom left is an exceptional example of, Hindu temp of a Hindu temple in India's Tamil Nadu state. The innermost sanctuary contains a shrine to Lord Vishnu, the god who preserves the universe. Necro Necrogeographers necro study the culture, cultural and spatial variations in the disposal of the dead. Often their work involves mapping data as well as reading the landscape for clues about cultural practices and their change through space and over time. Geographers see cemeteries or deathscapes, which are landscape expressions of religion, as fascinating spaces where evidence of syncretic processes that give rise to new hybrid forms are visible. Theravada Buddhists, Hindus, and Sikhs normally create their deceased. As, tradition, as traditionally practiced in India, cremation involves placing the body on a pyre, a large wooden structure that is set on fire. Hindus believe that it is to be cremated so close to the Ganges brings moksha, a release from the cycle of death and rebirth. The photo at the top is Iklutna Cemetery in Alaska. Russian Orthodox and Native American practices have fused here, as demonstrated by the spirit houses fronted with an Orthodox cross. In Orthodox Christianity, burial grounds are sanctified spaces, and the large Orthodox cross shown here testifies to that belief. The photo in the bottom right is a columbarium for storing cremated remains. This is a high-rise columbarium in Hong Kong. Local customs have traditionally favored in-ground burial sites with auspicious feng shui. However, land scarcity makes such use of space economically impractical. Please pause the video and answer the following. How is geopiety expressed in religious and non-religious contexts? In your own words, using the text as a guide, be thorough and specific with your answer.